Inversa does is we take invasive species that are destroying ecosystems and we turn them into high-grade leather. Invasive species create just a massive amount of environmental and economic damage. They particularly hit rural, impoverished communities. In order for something to be sustainable in our mind, it actually needs to go beyond what's accepted and do something good for the planet. I've been a scuba diver for 10 years, diving in the Caribbean and throughout the Atlantic. You kind of watch the degradation of the coral reefs year after year due to this lionfish. And at one point we linked up and decided we needed to do something about it. And here we are. Inversa goes beyond sustainable. The current definition of sustainability is just doing less damage. That's not sustainable, it's just doing less bad. We want to take it so much further than that. Fundamentally, it's about reviving ecosystems. It's about bringing life back into regions that have been destroyed by invasive predators of all types. We started with the lionfish, it's invasive in the Caribbean. We work with the python, it's invasive throughout the Everglades. And we work with the dragonfin, and it's invasive throughout freshwater ecosystems from the Great Lakes all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico. The industry as a whole, it's not been a lack of awareness. They've wanted to do better. There's just been a lack of solutions in place. And they've made steps in the right direction. There have been vegan leathers. There have been recycled leathers. These are all great. They move in the right direction. Now, for the first time, we have leather that has a positive impact on ecosystems. And that's exciting. We're building a materials platform based on invasive species. We're just getting started. We started with the lionfish, we now have added a couple of other solutions, and we're going to keep growing and increasing our offerings to brands to maximize their choice and what materials they want to use and how they want to save the planet. It's simple. It's leather that revives ecosystems. We're letting fashion be the hero. Thank you so much for, uh, for coming and thank you so much for having us. Um, it's an honor to be invited to speak here at, at Linea Pella in the heart of fashion, the heart of Milan. It's uh, quite very exciting. Um, for those of you who don't know, I'm Arif Chavda. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Inversal Leathers. And I'm here to t today to talk to you about net positive leather. So let's talk about it. Take a look for a moment at this wallet, this wallet right here. At a first glance, it kind of looks like any other leather wallet. It looks like leather, it feels like leather. You'll have to take my word for it, it smells like leather. And it even stretches like leather. That's because this wallet is genuine leather. But this wallet is also more than that. This wallet is actively healing ecosystems around the planet. This, this wallet, this is the first leather good that actually revives nature. That's because this is made with invasive species. Invasive species are those that have been introduced to an ecosystem outside of their native habitat, where they have no natural predators, unlimited prey, incredibly high reproductive rates, and create a cataclysmic amount of damage. So this wallet is made with two of our leathers, invasive lionfish leather and invasive dragonfin leather. And some of you will know that these species, only within just a few years, took over their ecosystems, came to dominate and suffocate those ecosystems. But by removing two invasive predators, this wallet saves 70,000 native reef fish. It protects coral reefs. It defends freshwater lakes and rivers all throughout the United States. Fashion can heal the planet, and this wallet is just the beginning. Let's take a look at these shoes. Made with Inversa lionfish leather, these shoes actually restore coral reefs. We're limited only by our imagination, and with our product partners, we're dreaming of a world where everything can heal the planet. What about handbags? What about a clutch? What about luggage? What about even home goods? So what do you call this leather that can heal the planet? We call it invasive leather, because it's made from invasive species. Over the last two years, we have refined our processes, patented our technologies, and won approvals from leading environmental groups. And today, we're working with partner brands around the world to create a, a world where fashion heals the planet. 
here in this wallet, we have a product that literally is breathing life back into two dying ecosystems. And today, I'm here to talk to you about our third invasive species. We'll get there, but first we're going to talk about how truly insane this really is. This entire industry is striving for a standard of sustainability. But what does that even mean? Closer to net neutral or less bad? It's no wonder that in every poll out there, consumers won't pay for sustainability because who gets excited by a label as uninspiring as less bad? At Inversa, we're doing away with less bad. And in fact, we're doing away with the label sustainability. We're innovating a future that will come to define a new standard of fashion. Our fashion, the future of fashion, is net positive. Our mission is simple. We create net positive leathers from invasive species that are destroying native ecosystems. And, and fortunately, we're not alone. We work with governments, agencies, and nonprofits all around the world to help bring light to this cause. In the US, we work with the leading environmental agency, NOAA, N-O-A-A, stands for National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Internationally, we work with uh, ORA, a multinational uh, ocean nonprofit called, uh, that stands for Ocean Risk and Resilience Alliance. And we work hand in hand with the state of Florida and the government of Mexico. And most importantly, we work with fashion brands to help create this world where fashion heals the planet. We're ushering in a future of fashion that appeals to all consumers. It's said that people are turning away from leather because of its potential or purported environmental consequences. And it's said that there are millions of younger consumers who have never even owned a leather good. But with Inversa, each one of these consumers is a potential buyer because who doesn't love something that heals the planet? especially when it's leather, and especially when it's net positive. In a world where net neutral sustainability is the heartbeat of the industry, imagine what your brand could do with a net positive message. Millions of new consumers, expanding annual volumes, leading the industry. Every brand today has a chance to push the boundaries of fashion, and this is how. For me, this problem is deeply personal. I've been a scuba diver for 10 years. I started diving out of Honduras, where our coral reefs are under attack by the invasive lionfish. From Colombia to Honduras to Florida, even into the UK Strait and across the Mediterranean, the lionfish kills about 79% of native, reef, uh, native life on any coral reef it touches. With that kind of damage, nothing survives. The entire ecosystem falls out of balance and the coral itself dies out. So diving around the Atlantic, I really, really wanted to do something about this. And so exactly two years ago, we created Inversa Leathers to combat the invasive lionfish and defend our oceans. And we're proud to say that with our brand partners across the fashion spectrum, from small leather goods to wallets to shoes, we have removed thousands of invasive predators and defended billions of native animals. And we're just getting started. With an estimated $1.2 trillion of economic damage inflicted by invasive species around the world, there's a lot more to get done. We've identified 4,000 human-induced and introduced invasive species that need to be addressed. And the crazy part is, it's not just that fashion is an industry that can manage these problems. It's that fashion is the only industry that can manage these problems. Many, many sectors have tried. The food industry tried, nonprofits got involved, governments get involved, but ultimately, there's only one industry that can tell a beautiful story in such a delicate way to a consumer who deeply cares, and that's this one. Inversa has launched two products thus far that defend two ecosystems. First, invasive lionfish leather, which protects coral reefs from the Caribbean all through the Mediterranean. And secondly, invasive dragonfin leather, which protects rivers and lakes throughout the United States. And today, I'm excited to announce our third species. Probably saw a little bit on the video, but it's one that defends forests and, bio and the biodiversity that depends on these forests, the invasive Burmese python. So we have brought an example of one of these monsters here to show you. The invasive python is a deadly predator that threatens the Everglades forest. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site and an ecosystem that underpins continental biodiversity. The original invasion stemmed from a pet that humans released into the forest, and today endangered species and the delicate balance of the forest itself are at risk. 
because pythons are indiscriminate eaters. They'll eat everything, everything in their path from a songbird to a deer to even an alligator. And the way they hunt is absolutely astounding. They will hide in swamps and even climb into trees to drop down onto prey and strangle it over the course of hours and sometimes even days. These pythons absolutely threaten the health of this forest and we have to do something about it. This issue is widely known and it's a top concern of conservationists and I bet if you look it up later, you'll see thousands of articles about it. But to date, no one's been able to do something. No one's been able to make enough of a difference until now. The fashion industry can be the savior of the Everglades forest. And in fact, with Inversa, fashion can be the hero that vulnerable ecosystems all around the world so desperately need. From coral reefs in Colombia to the waters around Cyprus to the forests in Florida, fashion can be the hero. One of the, uh, the themes this year centers on reimagination. So for a moment, Reimagine a new world, a new fashion world with me. One where in every leather good, there's an element of invasive leather. So every single good, every leather good, does some amount of positive impact for the planet. Imagine a world where the handbag on your arm protected a dolphin nursery off the coast of Greece. And your friend's shoes defended a family of endangered deer in Florida and you pull cash out of a card case that helped protect the endangered social wrasse in Belize from complete extinction. That imagined world can happen, and that imagined world is already coming into existence. We have created certified invasive supply chains, built NGO and government partnerships. Also, fashion can do what fashion does best. So we have a simple message. Let's have fashion heal the planet. Together, Let's create beautiful, net positive pieces. With invasive leather, every handbag, every shoe, every wallet created can be a breath of oxygen that the planet gets to take. So on behalf of our planet, let's come together, breathe for the planet, and buy invasive. Uh, thanks so much for coming. Uh, if you guys have any questions, I'm happy to take any now. Um, or uh, if, you know, happy to uh, give you the time back. <laughs> Not if, hello. Oh, there it is. Hi. Hi. Um, hello. Hello. What method are you using to catch the lionfish? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the lionfish live on coral reefs, kind of just scattered throughout the world. Um, well, m the Atlantic Ocean. They're removed with spears. So there's no bycatch. There's no trawling. There's no, I mean, we would love to line, line hook them, but uh, they actually don't respond to that. So the only way to remove an invasive lionfish is through spear diving. So a lot of times you see scuba divers it's go by down. invasive predators of all types. We and now it works. The lionfish is invasive in the Caribbean. We work with the python throughout the Everglades. And we work with the dragon. All right, well, we tried. Thank you. Um, yeah, so does that answer your question? Yeah, it's just spear diving. Yes, sir. So there's a number of invasive reptile species in Florida. Are you working with any of the others, like the tegu and the iguana? No, we are not yet. Um, but how we select invasives are pretty much pr entirely dependent on how bad they are. We try to work with only the worst and then, you know, work our way off of that list. So there are a number of different agencies that certify and qualify invasive species. The tegu are really bad. The green reptiles are really bad. Um, the iguana, I think you mentioned as well, there, there are a lot of problems. So far, we only work with the invasive python, um, but, uh, you know, stay tuned. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Hey, uh, just to say I, I love the idea. Oh, thank I, you. I, I love the novelty. I love the spin. I think it's it's something that's very cool. And my, one question I have is, have you take the Burmese python model, for example. There, there are a number of snakeskin supply chains in Southeast Asia that have very good sustainability credentials. As you know, that's the native range of these animals. There is a large industry that's developed. You'll see many of the stalls here selling various exotic species, including Burmese pythons. Um, in the United States, I don't think it's any secret, people are relatively affluent, and so the impetus to go out into a a harsh environment like the Everglades and to 
harvest a species, even if they are in overabundance or invasive, might not be there like it is for, say, an Indonesian or Malaysian or Vietnamese person living on whatever they live on, but it's, it's appreciably less than in the United States. Do you think you'll be able to market the leather, leather coming off those animals at a competitive price given you have this natural supply chain at a, at a cost base that is significant, I presume, I don't know, I'm ignorant, but presumably significantly lower than, than you could produce the material in the US. So your question is, can our basically pricing be competitive with, um, you know, the farmed, yeah. farmed pythons, basically. For, for example, I'm aware of the python challenge. The, you know, the, yeah, yeah. in the Florida it, state, yes, the yeah. government, fish and wildlife or something said, okay, all the southern folks can go out and, <laughs> and shoot as many pythons as they want. And mm -hmm. let's say that you are benefactors of those skins. Mm -hmm. I think even from an invasive, mitigating the problem of invasives, what, they killed 200 pythons in the two weekends. And so it was a minuscule number. Do you think that this has legs, I guess, in terms of, have you done the math, the market reading to see, you know, when a lot of these big tanneries and brands put in orders, they're 2,000, 5,000 skins at a time. They might use 100,000 skins every year. If you get, with a huge amount of effort, only two, 300 skins, as in I don't know what's happening on the ground, the business model, do you have any inputs out of, out of interest only. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're newer to the, um, I mean, the, the invasive python is one we just started, but maybe I'll answer your question with how it worked with the lionfish, because that we, we launched uh, in January this year. Um, part of what we do is actually create the supply chain, because there are hundreds of millions, if not billions, of lionfish in the ocean today, and the vast majority of them are just creating damage untouched wherever they happen to be. So generally when we come into a geography, we set, a, you know, we, we, we announce that we are harvesting them, we help create partnerships with cooperatives, fishing cooperatives all throughout the Caribbean, and we work with them. So a lot of times it's not about taking what already exists, it's about building new supply chains and strengthening the volume by which we're actually able to remove these invasive predators. So unclear of how this will, will play out with, uh, we, we don't have a specific number for you of this is what the total carrying capacity, but the carrying capacity of lionfish today, I mean of python today is, it's hundreds of thousands in the Everglades right now. So, I mean, it's the fact that we're only removing 200 every year is a huge problem. Yeah. Uh, to help try and answer that question, the, the, uh, the harvest is massively subsidized by U.S. Fish and Wildlife. So they pay per the size of the animal, but it's a very hefty fee, like $50 per hatchling. So it's massively subsidized. Yeah, it's 50 and then they pay another 25 per foot over a four foot snake. Yeah, no, it's, it's absolutely true. And that was also true with the lionfish. And one of the, one of the things that we, one of the reasons we started this is because we wanted to create a supply chain and create interest and demand and tap into a consumer who cares despite whatever the political headwinds may be, despite of the funding opportunities of a nonprofit, because we've seen the same thing with lionfish. Subsidies come up, subsidies go down, they come up, they disappear, and now we've, we've come into geographies where we're here to stay, and we create a stable relationship between you know, us as the buyer and the fishing cooperatives as the seller. And so that stability helps them build comfort, um, that there's a supply chain that's here to stay, and then they can go harvest many, many of these out of the oceans. So, you know, the, to your answer, yes, there's a hefty subsidy that the government pays, um, but we're building something independent of that. And so, you know, while the subsidy is there, that's great for the for the hunters, um, but the subsidy may not always be there, and that's what we're trying to solve. Yes, sir. Say it one more time. In California right now, it is python and alligator and crocodile. All of them, they are illegal and actually criminal to mm -hmm. sell. Mm -hmm. And uh, how do you address that right now with this specific harvesting that you guys you do? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, I believe in California, the alligator and crocodile is tied up in litigation right now. And I, I think you're right, the python is illegal. Um, I have not looked into the, the laws of what... Uh, of what is allowed and not allowed to be sold in California, but I would be, um, I, I would be very curious around uh, 
how the, uh, the government would react to something like this because it's strictly a net positive impact for the planet. And it's, I, it's, it's something that environmentalists, the US government, the state of Florida, everyone's trying to encourage. I understand that, but the state of California is the only state that it is illegal. So it is one of the 50. <laughs> yes, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I, we'll have to look into that. All right. Going once, going twice, sold. Thank you guys so much. <laughs>